Lightnings and storms can be a very frightening prospect indeed, and uh, we get them all the time, and uh, keeping ourselves as safe as we can from lightning is very much paramount in those situations. Joining us to cover that today with uh, a new perspective on lightning is our Professor of Science. He's from the University of Newcastle. He is John O'Connor, and he is safe inside today. <laughs> Good morning, sir, and uh, and welcome. Lightning, a very dangerous thing for... A, uh, it actually takes a, a surprising number of lives each year. It does, and in fact, towards the end, we should actually tell give people some advice on, on how to avoid getting killed. But 4,000 people a year mm. around the world, and billions of dollars worth of damage, uh, you know, including things like bushfires, you know, buildings going up and so forth. And and it's been a problem for a long time. I mean, the, uh, in the olden days, uh, you know, church buyers used to be the thing they'd get hit by and by lightning and the church would go up. And But um, interestingly enough, an American uh, scientist, Benjamin Franklin, uh, worked out how to protect buildings. And that was to put a, a copper conductor right from the tallest part of the building right down into a good solid earth. <laughs> And the, the point is that rather than going through the structure itself, it went through this very solid mm. copper bar and protected the building, which which is good. And there's still some issues because – and they still use this. I mean, you know, on towers and houses, you know, tall buildings and so forth. So that's certainly one way. But that's a, a somewhat passive way, uh, you know, wait, wait till I get hit version. Um, yeah, there are times when you know the tower is has delicate equipment in it. You don't mm. want the tower to be hit, or you want hit that tower over there, not me. Yeah, you know, that sort of thing. And so they've been trying alternatives. One uh, interesting one they tried about sixty years ago was to use rockets with wire trailing behind so they how get... very early space age of them by the <laughs> exactly. way <I'm> like... <laughs> exactly <laughs> it so, sounds very off the time so, so, so they get to a point where they think there's a you know big thunderstorm coming so they they line this thing up fire it into the thunderstorm and and it's about 90 percent of the time it worked uh, you know it uh, yeah the lightning strike came through the rocket through the wire to the ground and protected the surrounding material <laughs> Trouble is, if you're in the area, you've got this rocket and all this wire falling back down on you after the fire shot. So, so you're safe from the lightning, but from the the giant clumps <laughs> of material, you may not be so safe. Yeah, it could get throttled, but you know, could could get strangulated by a bit of wire or something. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that was a bit of a messy one, and you had to sort of ship the rockets around and so forth. Um, so it, it it was successful, but not practical. And so a group in Europe have been working on an alternative. A minute you still have to ship this gear around. But the idea is that um, you, you try to spark the lightning somewhere else to, to dissipate it so that you can protect the tall towers or any other delicate equipment. And what they're doing, instead of firing a rocket with some wire attached, they're firing a laser. In fact, it's a, it's a very strong, very short duration laser. They fire it a thousand times a second. And what that does is produce uh, a path through a th- the air. Hang on. A thousand times a second. That's just amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's 2,000. You went a little bit too fast. Yeah. But, yeah, so, so this is designed. It, it has a very a very strong peak intensity. And uh, what, what that does is... Um, and the reason you do several of is uh, each laser pulse actually creates an ion trail and and it actually changes the the properties of the air along that trail and it can actually focus the laser into a finer and finer beam so you actually get even more intensity and so the idea is you fire this laser so it passes over the top of the tower that you're willing to sacrifice straight off into the cloud and uh, and then get it to encourage it to come back down this iron trail. And, you know, they're, they're, they've had early experiments, and, yes, they've found that it, it does um, induce the lightning. They've been able to track the lightning because, you know, they've got uh, systems all over Australia where, mm. you know, you can actually see lightning strikes where there's a storm coming through. Well, they use the same technology to, to track the pathway, <laughs> the detail pathway, and they can use that also looking at light and so forth. And they could see that the... The initial part of the lightning strike, which went up from the tower, it doesn't always come down, you know. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. the lightning strike goes up. So, yeah, so they could see the initial pathway of the lightning strike was along the laser beam. All right, in the early going with this new method, any perceived downsides? Well, you do have to have this laser, and it's got to be wherever um, you, know, you want to 
something you want to protect. Uh, it, it's it, it's quite a large one, but they haven't tried to miniaturise yet because they had to make sure it worked. Mm -hmm. So this this thing's a moderately large Early phaser. Days. But you know, once you can prove that it works, you can actually get into the process of uh, reducing, you know, taking away some of the electronics that you don't need, you know, because they were monitoring everything, and uh, you can actually reduce the size and uh, and and make it more portable. But yes, it's uh, it's intended to protect uh, critical structures, you know, airports. Um, fuel, fuel uh, storage areas, you know, those sorts of things where, you know, you really don't want lightning to come through. All right. Um, Weather-wise, we are expecting uh, some uh, severe thunderstorms uh, this afternoon. So it's not why we picked this topic. It just landed that way. So a few tips, John, just in case lightning does become a part of that picture tonight. It's really important. I mean, the first thing is don't get under a tree. I mean, trees are a great lightning yeah. uh, you know, a great attractor. Um, the two big tricks are... Um, Undercover. So if you're in a car, the car protects you. And mm -hmm. if, if the lightning hits the car, it'll go around you. You're actually safe inside. So get inside a car, close the windows, keep yourself inside. Or if you're inside a house, that's fine. Uh, just don't touch metal down pipes or anything. Just get yourself in safely. If you're out in the open and you can't avoid you know, uh, lightning and you certainly don't want to go diving under trees and so forth, the best trick there is to uh, put your feet close together, side by side, not further apart, and uh, and to crouch down. So you make yourself a small little ball. Don't try not to stand on wet soil. Uh, get dry soil or Which rocks. Which is tricky because it's, if there's a storm, it's probably raining. But yeah, but I mean something like a drain, yeah, you know, gotcha. where there's a lot of water. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, get yourself down, feet together as, as close together and, and tuck down, and that'll minimise your chances of, uh, of at least current fl flowing through you. Since the joint won't support that too much, I think we'll stick by being inside the car with the windows up or inside with uh, the windows up and away from the edges as well. John, appreciate it. You have a great week. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Mark. Here he is with some tips on staying away from the lightning. Uh, our Professor of Science from the University of Newcastle, John O'Connor, on 2 and RFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.